Welcome back, Brookings Bio students. This is Mrs. Rydell. And in this third and last installment of our uh, cellular respiration process, we're going to look at what happens to those electron carriers that are made in the Krebs cycle. If you think about our pathway that we followed in our first video, we followed glucose breaking down in our cytoplasm and using two ATPs to get it started, getting four ATPs back for a net gain of two, um, two NADH carriers, we really haven't made very much ATP. Those two that we made in glycolysis, um, the, we're making one for every pyruvic acid coming through for a total of two ATPs here. That really doesn't give us very much ATP from our glucose. What we did was create a whole lot of these high energy electron carriers though in that process. There's still power stored at those molecules. And so we're gonna pass those electron carriers um, into the final part of our cell respiration process and try and get the last little bit of power out of those electron carriers and make some ATP. So think about our photosynthesis chapter now. We used our electrons, right, moving down um, electron transport to create ATP when we did our light reactions. We're gonna use that same, uh, very similar process of making a hydrogen gradient and then using the power um, to make some ATP. And so we're gonna uh, find a nearby membrane. Now, think about all of this Krebs cycle now is happening in the matrix of our mitochondria. And a nearby membrane would be really handy to put an electron transport system here. Uh, the closest membrane is the crystalline membrane. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna uh, use those electrons that are stored in those high energy electron carriers pass them down electron electron transport chain and create a hydrogen gradient and then use that gradient to make some ATP to get our last little power out of those carriers. So we're going to zoom in on our Cristae. If you look right here at the top, there's a little teeny tiny electron transporter. We're going to zoom that a little bigger. What we're looking at now is this little this little, th and remember when we did our uh, photosynthesis and we talked about the electron transport chain and ATP synthase and our light dependent reactions, and we said there's multiple setups of those all along in the membrane. And same thing is gonna be true of our Cristae. We're gonna have lots and lots of those little electron transport setups. We're gonna kind of zoom in on this little one and make it really big. So I'm gonna kind of take my Take this little, and I'm gonna zoom, zoom it bigger so I can kind of see what's happening. So if we could kind of zoom this bigger. So we're still, this is matrix side here. This is the matrix side of the membrane. This is my Cristae. Notice the phospholipids. Remember, membranes are made out of phospholipids and proteins. We're gonna have electron transporters again. We don't have the photosystems, but one side of the membrane now, matrix on, on this side, and on this side is my intermembrane space. Intermembrane space. And we're gonna create a gradient, just like we did before in our electron transport when we did a photosynthesis, but we're not going to have the photosystems now. Remember, this is not light uh, making the electrons move. We're going to uh, drop off the electrons from those electron carriers and pass them down the line. So the electrons are going to come from those NADH and FADH2 carriers, not from chlorophyll. Let's do a little coloring here. We're going to have our little electron transporters here, part of this membrane. They're attached in sequence electron transport chain, just like we had in our photosynthesis light dependent reaction. So let's put a little label on that. Electron transport chain. And all of these electron, electron transporters now are, just like we saw before in our um, photosynthesis reaction, those electron transporters are proton pumps. At the end of the line, we're gonna have ATP synthase again, our little tunnel. 
right? To make the, allow the ions to get through. This is an ion channel for hydrogen ions. Right? And this is ATP synthase. Let's kind of put a, let's put a little name label on. This is ATP synthase. And so now what we're going to do is feed electrons into our electron transport chain. We're going to create a hydrogen gradient, and then we're going to use the hydrogen ions coming through the tunnel to make some ATP. Okay, so let's feed in some of those carriers. Remember, we made some NADHs from charging up our uh, um, acetyl-CoA. We made NADHs down here in our Krebs cycle. And so we're going to take those, remember they, all they have to do is go right over to a nearby membrane here, and we're going to run them and feed them into our electron transporter. So let's do a little chemical reaction. I'm going to feed in my NADH. Let's keep our color going. NADH comes in. This is a charged up electron carrier. And when I drop off my hydrogens, right, I'm going to drop off the hydrogens, and I'm going to drop off electrons. So let's pass some electrons. We're going to pass electrons to the electron transporters. Those are going to pass down the line. Two electrons, two electrons, two electrons. We're passing them down the line to our last electron transporter. And when we do that, when we lose our electrons and our hydrogen, we go back to being NAD plus again. Where do you think those that NAD plus goes? It's floating in the matrix, right? It's floating on the matrix side. It can go right back over to the Krebs cycle and pick up some uh, new electrons, pick up some NAD, NAD plus becomes charged up again to NADH, cycles back over, drops the electrons, and then comes back again to the Krebs cycle to pick up more. So we're gonna, every time we're passing electrons, now remember these are proton pumps. So as we go down the line, we're going to pump protons three times for every NADH that drops off electrons. We're going to pump three hydrogens. And remember, we always have hydrogens kind of floating in our cell. Part of that whole process of maintaining the pH, the acidity balance in our cell, there's going to be some hydrogens around. And we're going to pump those over onto the um, intermembrane space side of the membrane. We're going to pump hydrogens. Notice NADH, three hydrogen pumps as those electrons come down the line. Those, when those come back again, that's going to make three ATPs. For every NADH I drop off, I get three ATPs back. So let's look and see what, how this is going to work. We're going to pass the electrons down the line. We're creating a gradient now, creating a gradient. Okay, let's feed in our other carrier, and this one feeds in a little differently. That FADH2 carrier, let's keep our uh, color going. Look to see what color we use down here. Okay, I'm going to use my, keep my FAD color going. I'm going to bring in FADH2. Let's keep our hydrogen color going, H2. And we're going to drop off the hydrogen. Okay, drop off those hydrogens and become FAD again. Okay, FAD again. And the electrons that come off of that carrier now, those two electrons are going to feed into the cycle. They're going to pass down the line. Notice now, as I feed in FADH2, it's going to, we're going to lose some of that energy. Okay, we go back to being an FAD carrier. We can send that back to Krebs and get charged up again. But notice now where this is coming in. It comes in a little farther down the slide, a little bit lower in the electron transport chain. And notice now if I come in here, let's get an arrow so I can point. If I come in here, I'm missing that first proton pump. So when FADH2 drops off electrons, it's only going to hit this pump. And this pump is going to pump two hydrogens across into my intermembrane space. And that means two hydrogens over, we're going to make two ATPs coming back. FADH2 makes a little less ATP when it drops off its electrons than NADH does. That seems kind of um, like it doesn't make sense because if you look, 
two hydrogens here, you'd think that we would get more hydrogens going across, but it's because of where that carrier drops off its electrons. It comes in a little farther down in the chain, and we're going to make a little less ATP. Okay, so we're using our carriers, we're feeding them into electron transport, they're passing electrons down the line. And remember when we did electron transport before, we had to have something here to catch those electrons at the end of the line. In When we did um, light dependent reaction, what caught them was the NADPH, those carriers, and then we sent that down to the Calvin cycle. Now we're going to catch them with another molecule. What's going to catch them is oxygen. I'm going to bring in oxygen here. Oxygen, O2. It's a gas, remember? Remember, and this is the reason why this is our with oxygen pathway. The reason that we need oxygen to run all the way through to complete cellular respiration is we need oxygen as our final electron catcher. We're going to take oxygen and catch the electrons and add some. Remember, we've got to kind of keep the charges balanced. We're going to use our hydrogens, H2. Oh. We're going to create water. Oxygen and hydrogens and electrons make a water drop. I'm going to make a little water drop here. We're going to make a little drop of water. And remember that kind of goes into our into our mitochondria. We have water in our cell, water in our blood. Water is the main component in our cytoplasm. We're making water. And remember that is when we talked about our equation for uh, cellular respiration, one of the byproducts was water. When we did Calvin cycle, um, when we did the light dependent reactions, remember water was feeding the electrons into electron transport into the chlorophyll. Now it's going to catch those electrons and we're catching them on the oxygen and producing water. Remember those two reactions, the photosynthesis reaction and the cellular respiration reaction are the exact opposites. So in photosynthesis, we made sugar in oxygen. Now we're going to use that oxygen and burn our sugar to create water molecule. Okay? And we give off carbon dioxide, coming from the Krebs cycle here. We're going to give off carbon dioxide, and we get energy back. The energy is going to be stored as ATP. Remember, that's our energy molecule. So as this process is running, what we're doing is creating a hydrogen gradient, passing the electrons down the line, where every time we drop off electrons, we're pumping hydrogens into our intermembrane space. So let's put that in our picture down here so we can kind of keep track of where these are going. So remember, all these hydrogen ions now are building up in this intermembrane space, the space between the cristae and the outer membrane. We're making a gradient. And remember, molecules always want to go from high to low. If you have a high concentration of hydrogen ions on this side compared to the matrix side, we're going to want to move through. If you give them a tunnel, remember, ions don't go through by themselves. They don't like those phobic tails. But if we give them a tunnel to pass through, like ATP synthase, we can pass the hydrogens through the tunnel. We're going to use the power of those hydrogens coming through the tunnel to provide the energy we need to take ADP and attach the phosphate group to become ATP. ATP. For every NADH that drops off electrons, we're going to get we're going to get three ATPs. For every FADH2 that comes down the line and drops off electrons, we're going to get two ATPs. So if you look at this whole process, the ATPs um, that we make directly, two net gain of two in glycolysis. A net gain of two in the Krebs cycle. 
all of these electron carriers now are going to feed into electron transport. So for one glucose molecule, one glucose, I'm going to get, running all these electron transport carriers through, I'm going to get 32 ATPs. Right? 32 ATPs for all our electron carriers, plus the two that we made here, that's 34, plus the two that we made there, total of 36, 36 ATPs for one glucose molecule. That, my friends, is the process of cellular respiration. Splitting our sweet glycolysis, making pyruvic acids, and then with oxygen, sending them into the mitochondria to pass through the Krebs cycle to release those carbons as carbon dioxide, charge up a whole bunch of high energy electron carriers, and then send those electron carriers down the electron transport chain to transfer the energy from those carriers, using it to create a hydrogen gradient and then using that gradient to make some ATP. Thanks for watching.